I stumbled upon this studio called Studio Neat, uh, specifically because I've been listening to or I've just finished uh, the book that I read just recently now on um, Apple Books, which I recommend you check out. It's a lot. Would I dare say Apple Books is better to use than Audible? I know it's to say that because I used to have them as a sponsor back in the day, but um, I'm I'm liking the audio, the, uh, the Apple Books experience so far. It's been pretty good to use. So I finished reading... Um, this book called where's my library here uh, the company of one right i finished reading this book called the company one um this book right here right because you can see it on the screen hopefully i hope you guys can see that it's right there right uh by paul jarvis an amazing book that essentially kind of expounds upon some of the ideas you might have heard in the four hour work week it's basically a book talking about you know um the move to the move away from uh building startups or small businesses to scale right i know um every startup i've worked for so far in the last few years has always kind of bragged about the amount of employee new employees they're hiring the amount of new investment they're taking on the amount of uh, regions they're opening up and that's been a kind of a mark of like your sub your brand is growing right because essentially when you start a business or you start a startup you essentially start it in order to fill a need right there's a need in the market that people have are aware of or not aware of you service it you build it and obviously the more that you're obviously growing as a company is kind of a indication of how much people actually want your item right or want your product or your service so that's been kind of a thing but over the years lately we've seen a lot of pulling back a lot of resistance to splitting in a camp of some people saying you know what you don't need to build your business to be multi-billion dollar not everyone needs to be facebook or instagram or google because you know we know what troubles that leads to and in general sometimes running small businesses um, it lends itself to having a small team, sometimes a remote team, sometimes a team distributed all over the world that can work uh, in a very specific and specialized way, maybe with no distractions too, and can put out the best product. Because essentially, that's what it's all about. Especially if you've got an internet connection, you've got a phone, you can essentially connect with the entire world. So you don't need to have you know everyone housed in one building. So um, what Paul Jarvis argues is that you should be building a company of one that's essentially something you can be building during your work, right? During your work career or your nine to five, like I'm doing at the moment. That could essentially then start scaling up a little bit in terms of the amount of output or the amount of work you're doing, the amount you're charging, which essentially allow you to leave your full time work and kind of take up arms and become a sort of like company of one, which is less less so than a freelancer because freelance obviously you've jumped from project to project, but more so as in having recurring uh, punters or recurring customers coming back to you uh, for particular for specific product or service that you're supplying. And one case study that he kind of um, um, highlighted was these uh, two friends uh, who started up a design studio called Studio Neat, which I'm going to get up here on the screen. And again, I haven't heard of them previously, but it's a pretty cool concept. And essentially, um, the founder spoke about a little bit on the podcast of the company of one in a book about, um, you know, his dread of hiring people was that he didn't want to ever have that conversation where he had to let go of somebody right and because he knew how much he used to count or rely on a wage when he used to work a nine-to-five so the idea of having to hire somebody and then having to let them go if they weren't good enough and then you know the kind of turmoil struggle that comes with not having a source of income he didn't want to ever be part of that right and that was what kind of drove him which is something you don't really hear too often right sometimes you always hear of the solo entrepreneur of the team of entrepreneurs who are like oh i used to sell lemonade and lemonade stand i used to sell um baseball cards i used to go in the street market i used to do whatever i used to hustle chewing gum you know there's always that kind of you know that racks riches story that everyone has but you never really hear people say i literally started a business because i didn't ever want to be fired again right or i didn't ever want to fire somebody again right which is or some ever in general General. you don't really hear that so it's cool to hear that kind of perspective but anyway so studio neat um make cool products essentially um individual products that they sell on their on their site um really well made um minimalist kind of design they have everything from uh a mark one which is a minimal and durable retractable pen they have a tote book a notebook you can take with you they have a material dock wood docks for your apple stuff you can just lay on top of it which is interesting um i did realize that the other day i was thinking about how i think because i was listening again there's, these are two things happening at the same time right i was reading company of one i was also listening to um what audiobook i listened to other one i've got here so i was listening to company of one or oh, this is something else i listened to what's that book by cal newport oh uh i was listening to digital minimalism, digital minimalism by Carl newport too which i finished as well right so i'm listening to these two podcasts at the same time right at the same damn time 
so these two books at the same damn time and i got these two conflicting things in my head i got this idea that you know you start this solo business on your own company of one that you can kind of scale and essentially build into a lifestyle business that essentially supports your lifestyle and doesn't necessarily need to be you know a, a, a 1.5 million gross um whatever business or maybe whatever those numbers people like to throw out but it also got me thinking about digital minimalism, right, by Cal Newport, the book in terms of, you know, re- retracting from social media, not being continually plugged in and kind of stepping away from the plug that is social media, right? And then it got me looking at how people react or enact or act or interact with social media in general. And it got me thinking about people that just put their phone down on tables when they're talking. It's a very weird move, isn't it, right? To be talking to somebody in real life and have your phone down on a table because essentially any notification that pops up, you look at it. And if you, have you noticed any times, have you ever noticed in conversation with people, just look, watch people talking on tables. When someone else puts their phone down on the table face, facing up, someone else will do the same thing, right? And then when their phone pops up with a notification, they'll look and then instinctively the other person will look at their phone too. It's just a natural reaction people seem, seem to have all the time. Sort of like when you yawn and the other person sees you, it's contagious and they sort of yawn as well. And it got me thinking just about how, you know, glued we are to our phones. That like In a conversation with your friend, you have to put it on the table. It's a weird thing because you don't need to really. I guess people maybe do it because um, they don't want to have their phone in their pocket and it kind of hurts when they sit, especially if you're wearing, nowadays everyone wears slimmer or skinny jeans into some way, shape or form. So maybe it kind of clasping on your leg is kind of annoying. And maybe if you've got big legs like I have or long legs, you, your, your thighs may be touching the underside of the table. So that might be annoying. But interesting, um, just interesting how that is. And I guess Studio Neat have kind of built upon that because they've got um, this thing, which is a material doc, which I've never heard of, uh, a little kind of circle. If you listen to it by the podcast, it's a little circular round wooden thing with a, a nice granite. It looks like kind of top where you can kind of wrestle your gadget on top of, which looks really cool, I guess, for the most part, if you that way inclined. They've also got a glyph, a clamp that holds your iPhone. You can put on a tripod. They've got a canopy, which is a keyboard case, an iPad stand a panel book, they've got a Cosmo, a, a, essentially a, gra- a graphite um, pencil. Oh, no, it's a stylus. Okay, it looks like a graphite granite pencil. That's awesome. I used to use that back in the day, man, in school for art. That used to be one. That used to be my jam, man. There's no way you can not draw well using a, gra- a granite stick. Like, honestly, sketching on a granite stick is fucking awesome. I love it. An Apple TV remote stand. They've got a neat ice pick. So, basically, loads of little cool, interesting products. And, again, something that I've kind of thought to do myself um as well uh kind of taking inspiration from um, hiroshi fujiwara and his seminal book um what's that what objects and things whatever it's called where is it it's here somewhere no i got it nowhere near but anyway hiroshi fujiwara has this amazing book one of my you know idols in uh streetwear and fashion in general he has this god oh, this is a book he has this great book that kind of speaks about you know that kind of highlights some of his own worldly possessions and, you know, him coming from the fragment school of design or him having his own, frag, you know, studio that he kind of works out of. I kind of thought it would be a great way to do collaborations if I ever got to that kind of level with brands where you can kind of detach yourself away from it, which is sort of like what I thought, which I think is what um is maybe Virgil's long-term goal with Louis Vuitton. Because I think a lot of people were saying that even before he got the Louis Vuitton job, that he was always kind of kind of auditioning for the role anyway, right? Um he wanted a he wanted a role similar because he saw the long term vision was to always have off white and sort of like this design studio that could kind of exist by itself, right? It might I wouldn't be surprised if studio if off white got to a point where he was not even the person in front of it anymore or the kind of quote unquote creative director where it got to a point where it was kind of you know um, ambiguous as to who was designing it. The designs were changing season to season now, different themes, different flows, different patterns, different shapes, different colors. Um, and again, he could then concentrate um, lending his name to different houses and kind of imprinting his DNA, um, you know, within what they do in general. And I think that's a good way to kind of look at things, right? So I think with Hiroshi Fujiwara, with Fragment, that's what acts as that sort of like the umbrella for all these projects so that he can then lend his name, if he wants, directly to shoes, which he's done sometimes with Nike. And he could also na- lend his design studio, uh, Monica, the two Thunderbolts, to some things that he does as well, which he's done as well with Nike. And this book called uh, Personal Effects kind of details a lot of his own possessions that he has in his collection. And most of it, if not all, a kind of a good proportion of it, is his own stuff that he's done collaborations with, right? Stuff like this, like... um. These uh these shoes that he brought back, right? Um, the Nike Air Zoom All Court Premium Leather. And again, th- this is the kind of level that you need to be on, I think, for all our streetwear friends and enthusiasts that might be out there, right? This is what you need to do. This is my vision or goal of what I want to do anyway, essentially. Like, this is what it means to be a sneakhead or to be someone who's involved in the culture. 
It's, it's not a, the model isn't something a lot of people are kind of bothered about. It's a Nike all court. Um, I remember when I used to work at 948, these were available for so a very long time. Only a specific type of person was even coming out to buy them. But again, get an opportunity to work with Nike. So they're going for the easy, um, low hanging fruit. He picks out a model that a lot of people are wearing and brings them back in very um, subtle way. Uh, all black upper, all white. Um, all white sole, no foxing at all, just really well done, clever use of materials, just a clever, great shoe. And that's something I'd love to do. And I think the company one book kind of expounds on the idea of how to particularly kind of iterate that kind of thing out. And this book is awesome too, because it's got even it's even got like stuff about his pens and shit that he's designed, right? Or pens he's collected, like this Mont Blanc pen he's collected. And this is again, we're not really seeing that much of it nowadays with the influencers, right? We're seeing a lot of influencers who dress really well. We're seeing a lot of influencers who can who maybe are good at producing the odd, you know, the odd graphic tee again, which is not easy to do. So don't ever discourage that. Doing good, doing a good, making a good graphic t-shirt is very difficult. Um, again, we've got Afa that he helped kind of take part in as well. We, but we're not really seeing a resurgence of the influencers in the of the scale of an Aaron, not influencer, but you know, the cultural movers and shakers, the cultural. Um, you know, mainstays like an Aaron Bondor. We're not really seeing a new iteration of that so far, but we've not seen a new resurgence. We've not seen the new version of those kind of people. The, the ones that kind of carried on the Andy Warhol lineage. Maybe the closest thing we've got to it is maybe a Virgil. Uh, but again, I think he divides opinion too much for people to actually say that he is one of those people, right? I don't think people credit him with that much of an original thought on idea outside maybe these shoes, which again is sad, but I think he might have kind of damaged his name um, permanently because of the stuff he did with Pyrex especially those flannels and shit. I think that is maybe the reason why people don't really give them enough credit. But yeah, um, I don't know, man. I, I, I was reading that, that book, Company of One. I recommend you check it out. It's a really interesting book. It kind of got me thinking about stuff that I want to do. And it got me thinking as well. And, it, and it, again, highlight this amazing design studio, Studio Neat, that I recommend you check out. They make cool, amazing things. I'm, I'm definitely thinking of doing something similar with my own design projects, so especially with like those kind of one of one things that you want to make that aren't just merged things, right? You want to kind of put in an umbrella because this is similar to what um, Tom Sachs does at his studio, right? Tom Sachs has got his own studio that he kind of works on and does the same sort of thing. Where is it? Tom Sachs, right? It's a similar sort of project that Tom Sachs does at his shop, I'm pretty sure. So essentially he kind of has all these, and I think Heron Press did the same sort of thing. He had an object company, I think, or whatever, something similar. He kind of housed all these project, projects in. And I guess, as you can see on the screen here, Tom Sachs, the a contemporary artist who also has a studio based out of New York. No, does a studio based out of New York. Does something similar too. He has here on the screen, um, everything from a fanny pack to a zine, uh, to a t-shirt, to chairs, to playing cards or playing card holders, another chair, zine, 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 zines. Again, great stuff all around. Um, an entire store full of little trinkets that he makes or his him and his studio are able to design and put out there. Um, so yeah, um, I'm. I think I'm going to do something similar to it. I need to make more creative projects apart from this podcast. There needs to be more output from me in general. But yeah, that's a that's an amazing book. I recommend you check out um, Company of One uh, by Paul Jarvis. Again, very inspirational book. Got me thinking about loads of things, as you can tell.